everyone. Welcome back to our channel. I want to talk to you today about Novena. Um, Novena is our youngest and she was born a little over a year ago uh, in December of 2018 during our adoption process for the girls and she is such a little blessing um, she brings joy to everyone in the family um, but we have a little bit of a scare with her um, that we've taken an entire year to get to the bottom of so and now we finally have answers and I want you to follow along with our journey um, where we go to get her sedated MRI. So, come along with us. While Novena was in the hospital the second time after birth, about a week after she was born, the pediatrician was giving her an exam and I pointed out the fact that she had a sacral dimple, which is a small hole, uh, a little divot above, um, <coughs> above their little bottom. And the pediatrician examined it and said that it was troubling because it was shaped like a little S, um, which apparently sacral dimples with um, uh, like an S shape in the lower end of the spine is a sign of what's called tethered cord. So she ordered an ultrasound for her while we were already in the hospital. And we went downstairs and got an ultrasound of her back. And unfortunately the results were abnormal. They um, said that her spinal cord was too long and that it appeared to attach like a full um, a full vertebrae lower than it should. So she wanted me to follow up with neurosurgery at the major children's hospital that we were at. So we, about a week after getting out of the hospital, maybe two weeks, we went in to see um, a pediatric neurosurgeon that is pretty well known. And she said, um, after examining her that, and we, reading over all her reports from the ultrasound that she wanted her to have a second follow-up ultrasound at two months old. So at two months old, we took her back to the hospital for another ultrasound. And this ultrasound ended up having the same results as the previous ultrasound, which was unfortunate. And the neurosurgeon decided that the best course of action was to give her a sedated MRI. But since there were no um, problems, we would wait till she was a year old. So at one year old, we scheduled her for her MRI, which ended up being on the coldest day of the year. Thank you. Okay. Super cold, so I'm sorry. Okay, so we're going to
birthday. We are waiting to get our IV. Yeah, and then Mama gets to put on scrubs and go with her back to the MRI. Yeah, they gave you that to play with, didn't they? Yeah. This is like where they do sedation stuff. So I want to just explain what happened after I couldn't take any more pictures or videos. Um, when we go back to the sedation services area, they um, check her respirations and her heart rate and her blood pressure. And then they put in an IV. And after that, they, if you want to go back with your child to the MRI, then you have to change into scrubs. So you go to a locker room and you change into scrubs. And then at that point, my phone had to go in the locker because I was not allowed to take it to the MRI and I could not leave it in the room. So I had to lock it up. And then you go back in the room where I took Novena with me to the changing room so that she wouldn't scream because she was already just completely upset from them doing the um, IV. And I got to carry her all the way back to the MRI and they I actually wanted me to lay her down on the table so they could put on all the electrodes and everything on her uh, before the propofol had even worked and I said no how about I hold her while you do all that so she actually drifted off to sleep when we walked there so she was sleeping in my arms and I did not want to wake her up and have her start screaming again so they put everything on her while she was being held by me, though they seemed very miffed and annoyed by that. But I don't really care because my baby is, you know, what's important. And her being comfortable and happy and not screaming is important. So uh, we got her all done. And then later down, right when they started pushing the propofol through the IV, so she was just a little fuss, 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 and then just fell asleep. And they have her on this board on the like the bed that goes into the MRI and they put a frame over her head and she's sleeping and there's like a monitor showing her heart rate and everything. And they put a little nasal cannula of oxygen in her, even though she didn't need it, but they still give it to her. And then they give you earplugs and point you to a rocking chair next to it and next to this big machine and say, put on the earplugs and read magazines. So then for the next 45 minutes, I sat there with earplugs and getting a headache from how loud it was even with the earplugs and reading really boring magazines and she never woke up uh she was fine they pull her out they immediately stop the propofol and she starts waking up back there but not enough to want to be picked up just kind of like blinking looking around closing her eyes again and then they move her on to a like a little crib like a metal crib with rolly wheels on it bigger than like when they're born in the hospital but smaller than those giant cribs you see um when kids are like in the ic or something it's like this little mini portable crib and they put her in that and i walked with her back and she wasn't crying or anything she was just waking up but not upset and by the time we get back to the room she's getting a little more groggy and uh, grumpy and they're like, okay, you can go change now. And I was like, yay, I can go change and get my phone. And, send, and then I can come back and nurse her. But there was people in the changing room with the lockers. So I had to wait because it was locked. So I had to wait for like 10 minutes for these people. They took forever. And so I finally went and got changed. And at that point, she was awake and crying and wanted to nurse. But these scrubs that they had given me, they were like, oh, you're a size small in scrubs. Well, yeah, I could squeeze myself into them. But they were not comfortable. And there was no way I was going to be able to comfortably nurse her 
with these tight scrubs on. So I went and changed as fast as I could. I came running back to her and she was sitting in the nurse's lap with a bag of goldfish and this absolute look on her face with her pouty lip sticking out, like just sad, not crying, dejected, but holding her goldfish. And apparently she had one in her mouth, but she wasn't even chewing it. And uh, so I picked her up and uh, got the goldfish out of her mouth and nursed her until she had woken up enough to sit up and start eating goldfish very slowly, but she couldn't really hold her head up. And they said it's normal for the propofol that they can't like, they have like newborn heads all of a sudden, they're just totally floppy and um, not strong. And the lady told me that when we got to the car, she'd probably fall asleep again. And that was normal and fine. And uh, she did indeed, uh, she didn't fall asleep in the car. We, we went to Aldi's, which was like 10 minutes away and she fell asleep. Um, when we started walking around, I put her in the carrier and she was still in her bunting, her little snowsuit because we couldn't um, go out of anywhere without a snowsuit because it was like negative five degrees with like a negative 30 wind chill today. So uh, she was in a bunting and then in the ergo on top of my zipped up jacket. So she just passed out asleep just like in um, Ukraine when we had her in buntings all the time because they're just so warm and comfy. So, but she's feeling a lot better. And they actually sent me home with a disc of her MRI and a report. And from what I can understand of the report, it looks good. So I'm happy, but I have to talk to the doctor to see what the doctor said. The pictures were horrible from all the like MRI pictures I've seen. These are like so blurry and horrible. And I don't understand why, because she was sleeping and it was 45 minutes. You'd think they would have some good pictures, but um yeah i'm waiting to talk to the doctor to get like a final report but so far it looks good and yeah that's that's our day so we got a full report from the doctor i think the next day maybe it was two days later and everything was completely normal on her mri which is such a huge blessing so they need no follow-up and yay i'm glad that we did it that was very stressful but it was good to get rid of that nagging thing in the back of your head wondering if um something was wrong with your baby. Um, and yeah, she's totally fine. So praise the Lord. <laughs>